The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble level. Lovable. Host, once more in the breach, do we go, dear friends. Uh, S&P's up eight points, uh, volume 2.3 billion shares. Uh, got a low out here. Going to have a little lighter volume. Um, I don't think we've put in a low yet. Maybe Monday. Uh, but uh, very little fear coming into a low. Closing probably below uh, 2100 again on the S&P cash. Probably close uh, below 18000 on the Dow. And very little concern. Uh, also, wild prognostications of future values of stocks uh, makes me think that this is yet uh, another day, just like yesterday, where, yeah, could we go up 10 points in the S&P cash? Yes. Could we also go down 60 points or 70? And the answer is yes. I still see that. But uh, today's action, uh, if I don't spend so much time on the indexes and look at the individual stocks, still tells me that uh, 2030 is a decent possibility without some kind of signal, uh, a sign of strength. I would have loved to seen this market get down to like 2075, close back above 2100, and then prove me wrong about the chances of lower prices, but uh, not to be. We also had uh, the rig count come out at one o'clock. Uh, before that, uh, we had uh, some uh, dubious news in the oil business that uh, spiked the uh, price in oil for a little bit. Um, I haven't looked at it here in the last few minutes, but it looked to me like it was going back down to the low of the day. I think we had, what, seven or nine new rigs pop up. Um, you know, it's uh, anytime these things become even slightly profitable, the rigs uh, start piling up fairly quickly. I think a lot of people thought that was going higher. Talked to a friend of mine. Uh, that's inside the business and thinks that there may be uh, way too many people long crude uh, in the hedge fund business that uh, a move back down to 240 could wipe out to yet another few hedge funds as everybody and their dog got on this um, bandwagon when it was going back up. And now they're having a hard time getting back out. Uh, that kind of goes with me thinking that crude certainly has the possibility of getting right back down to the 38s again in the in near future. And uh, I don't know what it, uh, Andy Heck last night uh, talking about uh, crude prices and the Russians trying to get everybody together uh, to form a cartel so they didn't have too much supply and the price went down. But uh, as I've always thought, uh, ever since I watched uh, Lawrence of Arabia, uh, trying to get uh, all those Arabs to agree to anything, probably impossible. The equivalent of trying to herd cats. And uh, I don't think that's possible either. I had a cat. It would never do anything. Uh, but uh, that's it. Anyway, uh, 2096 on the S&P cash, which is up seven and a half points now. Um, the question is, with a couple hours left to go, uh, are we going to have a bunch of heroes, or is this thing going to uh, once again pull back to lows? But uh, I don't see anything in here that says, uh, uh, I think Steve Rhodes said at the end of his show, is there anything out here to say that uh, if you short for a while, have some room that you uh, wouldn't want to just sit on your hands for Monday, Tuesday, and maybe even Wednesday? And uh, that's my words, by the way. Um uh, that uh, you just didn't want to sit on your hands. The risk reward just doesn't seem that great uh, that we look at here. You never know what the next headline is going to bring. And most of those headlines have been ones that move the market lower. 23 or 2.35 billion shares as we start the day. The dollar is off five cents. The TLT uh, tried to go lower earlier uh, kind of and higher. 
But uh, right now up uh, 83 cents on the day. Uh, that's still, I suspect, we're going to open up one day and this thing is going to gap down. And that gap is going to start uh, looking at about 128, maybe 127.50. That may be where the at least mid medium term, not a short term bottom comes in. And uh, you know what? We've been on a selling binge on just about everything since the beginning of September. Hard for me to think that that turns around because of the election. Uh, most everybody, I think, on Wall Street, although they don't want to say it, is looking at uh, two to three to maybe four rate hikes over the next year. The first one, uh, almost a uh, guaranteed rate hike in December, um, sans anything else. And the question is, do we have two or three next year? And uh, I think there's a good possibility of that. Anyway, 2097, as uh, always, we like to start uh, and listen to the power trading at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. <laughs> uh, today's bounce just looks like a dead catfish to me. I always, uh, I always thought catfishes were maybe the most disgusting creatures in the world. I couldn't even touch one. I could fish for bass, but I didn't even want to know what a catfish is. It's just ugly and smelly and... Uh, of course, growing up and learning to fish in the Midwest, uh, we had bass and everything else. But uh, talk about a fish that doesn't taste like much. The uh, fish that didn't even uh, good enough to taste like chicken. Uh, and then coming down here and you get a good uh, ahi tuna right off the boat. Uh, it tastes like steak. Then you know what fish is supposed to taste like. Uh, not like some kind of cat food smelling stuff out of a can, but uh, if you can get it right off the boat, get it on to uh, uh, some uh, nice uh, charred coal and let it uh, cook for a little bit with a little olive oil and some seasoning. Ah, better than steak, actually. But uh, it's uh, all about that uh, getting it right off the boat and uh, getting it in to my belly. Anyway, just a thought. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1929, in an attempt to calm panicking investors. Run, Forrest, run. The New York Stock Exchange announced that it will be open for trading only three hours a day this week. The investing public mix and takes no comfort trading an astounding six million shares in just 180 minutes twice more uh, the level of a, form, a normal full day just weeks earlier. So it doesn't do any good, but people can continue to talk and try this. Um, a lot of discussion today on financial infotainment TV uh, that uh, pretends to give financial advice. Uh, most of this is there's just haven't been uh, eight trading days down in so many years. Well, first of all, to me, um, if we went down half a point for eight days, would anybody say anything other than they were bored? So doesn't the amplitude of, uh, of movement have something to do with it? They also have another problem, and that is how many times did the market just close instead of trade those eight days, and they waited until the market would pop up to open it back up? We'll talk more about this and more things and charts. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that
that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And uh, we talk about risk reward out here. I just thought it was an interesting article, um, especially when you want to know what your risks and rewards are. And uh, I wonder what the, someone would say the worth of smoking is. A research team led by scientists in Los Alamos National Laboratory compared tissue samples of a little over 1,000 smokers to 2,500 uh, or 1,000 non-smokers to 2,500 smokers, examining each individual's DNA to look for mutations. They found that for every cigar 50 cigarettes smoked, there is one extra DNA mutation for a cell in the lungs over the course of a year, this means that someone who smokes a pack of a day, about 20 cigarettes, has 150 extra mutations per cell in the lung, 97%, uh, 97 uh, per larynx cell, 23 per mouth cell, 18 per bladder cell, and 6 per liver cell. And, uh, yeah. So if anybody calls you a mutant and you smoke, you know why. But uh, it's amazing you can have so many uh, mistakes. But uh, yeah, there's 3.8 billion uh, combinations uh, of uh, DNA. And I'm not exactly sure how they figure out what is a mutation. If it's just a single letter being out of whack, it didn't really make sense. But uh, at least you can put a, uh, some calipers on exactly what happens to you and why you get cancer. But from this, it makes me think, like, man, we're like almost bulletproof when it comes to cancer. If you can get an extra 150 mutations per cell in your lung every year. Uh, the most interesting thing is how many of these mutations went away in uh, people that were 30 and quit smoking. And that in five years, almost all of them went away. They uh, Apparently very good if you quit. And... Uh, even at uh, 50, um, it seemed like uh, there was significant chances. If you're 60 and smoking, you better 
just keep on smoking, apparently. I think that's kind of the gist of the end of the article out there. It may be the only thing keeping you alive. Um, Tesla uh, bovine stuff is being thrown around. Uh, it has been thrown around by Barron, um, who owns 1.5 million Tesla shares. But uh, this was uh, one of the most astounding things I'd ever heard. If batteries become two times cheaper over the next seven years and 120 gigabyte factories are made, then a combustion engine cars are replaced by Tesla and it's worth 50 times more than today. So I started doing the back of the envelope. Um, and uh, so he's figuring that his cars are going to come in with about 50 to 55 percent margin. Uh, when the average car sells today for 6% margin, I wonder how he even starts to come up with these numbers. Of course, uh, the uh, reporter, or reporter at, I think it was a reporter, um, when he made this bold claim, did not follow up. But, uh, man, I would have been all over him. Um, these kind of bold claims, um, especially with a stock that is priced maybe five to eight times uh, more expensive than it should be trading at today seems rather interesting. Uh, many of the uh, folks uh, floating around the Tesla world are all saying it would be a much better idea if they did not buy Solar City. Uh, but other than that, they kind of stayed mom. I just don't understand the whole idea that uh, there will be zero competition for Tesla going forward. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of car companies and a lot of small people, smart people. I just don't understand the idea that somehow in manufacturing, now in software, you can come up some, with some interesting things. But in hardware, can you really make something that other people can't make and actually have that kind of advantage all over the world? And the answer is incredibly rarely but I'm trying to think of a piece of hardware uh, that uh, actually did this. But um, I always uh, worry that a top is in any time people come out. Uh, I think it was in 2000, uh, screaming about uh, Amazon going to 1,000. I think that was when uh, Amazon was in the $650 range. Maybe it was a $700 range. And, of course, it promptly started to roll over at that point. Uh, other times... You'll see these wild claims. In fact, uh, Apple, people were all over uh, Apple calling it was going to be the first uh, trillion dollar company uh, for value. And of course, it never made it. Anytime wild claims made, um, grab your uh, wallet because it, I think people are probably after it. Uh, lastly, in the news out here, and then we'll get to charts, uh, market share. Uh, also a Apple Google issue. Uh, strategic Analytics reported yesterday, or actually on Wednesday night, uh, Android has captured 88% of all smartphone ships in the third quarter of 2016, a period that also marks the fastest growth rate in a year. That used to be about 84% uh, in the previous quarters, and it kind of had been pretty flat at that for a while. Android's gain came at the expense of every major uh, rival platform, uh, strategy, uh, strategic analytics, uh, Linda Sue said in a press conference. But uh, 80, I mean, you're getting pretty pretty up there. The uh, other 11% are, are Apple phones, and there's about 1% of other phones that are probably Windows phones, and that's about it. Uh, but uh, not uncommon in the industry to have kind of a 90-10 split. Uh, the PC industry for almost 15 years was a 90% uh, Windows, 10% uh, Apple split. Uh, even when people started using Linux in the late 2000s, and it became popular as an operating system for desktops, um, I think it never got more than 14%. Uh, so normally there is a winner almost takes all attitude when it comes to technology and something that you'd want to take. Anyway, we're at uh, 2096 on the S&P cash, 2.44 billion shares. And you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path.tfnn.com. And you can also 
post a message in the den, and I will start reading now. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Uh, just one thing, Polar. Um, the EM space drive is in public uh, patent process in the United Kingdom. Um, yeah, um, everybody's... Everybody says there's something to it if you're unfamiliar with it. Uh, the EM space drive is a uh, device that you can put a little current in and actually get some decent amount of thrust from uh, in a vacuum. And uh, NASA has tested it. They're not exactly sure what's going on. It may end up being nothing. But uh, there's a lot of people that are looking at this theorizing why this thing does it. But uh, in space, uh, it's not all about how fast and quick you can get there. It's how long you can have somebody pushing on you. And uh, you put a little nuclear reactor in there, you may be able to get close to the speed of light with one of these EM space drives, and it may be how we get to, to the stars. Anyway, we'll be back after this short timeout. We will get to charts immediately. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And wow, there's a lot of stories going on here from the Rolling Stone uh, losing its uh, uh, lawsuit against all those guys up there on the rape story. Um, justice is slow. Uh, people talking in the den about uh, lawyers. 
Also, probably one of the funnier things going on in the United States right now, but the uh, uh, Mark Garagos, who you might remember being on CNN through all the the uh, O.J. Simpson stuff and then later on with all kinds of other stuff, um, kind of interesting. Um, he's kind of a big wheel out there in California law, and they kept trying to bug him for more fees for the California bar. And he started digging into it and found out that uh, they owned a building uh, alone that would pay all the dues for all the lawyers in California, of which there are tons, uh, for like the next 100 years or something. Um, so he said, instead of just trying to raise the rates for everybody, why don't you just sell that building? Uh, well, they were trying to put in about $10 million worth of uh, granite and some other stuff and upgrading the building. Uh, so it was like the Taj Mahal uh, and uh, dug into it a little bit more. And apparently uh, the people that are in charge of all the ethics for the lawyers, uh, i.e. the Bar of California, uh, is uh, ripe with fraud. Who would ever ex uh, expect the people that are supposed to be watching uh, all the people uh, would do that? But I, it's one of these things where uh, you start tugging on a string and then you find out everybody in uh, the uh, bar, at least the people that are there, are actually the corrupt people watching the other lawyers. And you wonder eh, just how corrupt can systems get? Well, pretty corrupt. But I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, let's go into uh, st other stocks of interest out here. Anyway, you'll probably hear about that in the next couple of months. That thing, I think it's starting one of these kind of issues that kind of slowly like uh, rolling a uh, snowball down a big hill kind of starts off small but apparently it's getting bigger and bigger out there but we might find a ton of lawyers in jail from california in the near future all about uh trying to live high on the hog on others expense never knew anybody like that before 2.5 billion shares uh 2096 on the s p cash now we had a lot of earnings um we're going to get to that again you can email me uh, at path at tfnn.com or call me at 877-927-6648. Um, one of the ones that uh, there weren't, the charts weren't actually showing a great deal of what was going on in uh, earnings. ATVI should be it. Da -da, isn't it? ATVI? Yeah. Not exactly sure why. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Activision Blizzard, there hadn't been a lot of new titles out. Uh, EA kind of came off of its high, too. We'll look at this next. But I'm not, normally by now, we're starting to see a lot of titles uh, for video games for Christmas. Uh, this is, what, the 4th of November. Normally, we have a lot of demos and a lot of people lining up for uh, the game of Christmas. I have yet to see anything in the news out there that really points to a particular game that really would push this market. This is kind of like the movie business in the idea that is one good title uh, means that people are much more likely to go to yet another movie that year. If the movies all stink, uh, they are much more likely to go see a stinker and not come back and see when the next good movie's out. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, Hacksaw Ridge, finally a reason to go to the movies. If uh, you have not been uh, rather violent, we went out and saw it last night, but uh, easily the best movie of the year. Probably would win the Academy Award if uh, Mel Gibson hadn't said all those things when he was drunk. But uh, eh, how can you say? Anyway, uh, fantastic movie, well worth going and paying money at the theater. Just about nothing else this year has. That may change it. And then um, if you're looking at uh, movie stocks too, although I haven't looked that deep in it, uh, the other movie coming out in a week is going to be Arrival. And uh, it's got 100 on uh, the uh, Rotten Tomatoes right now. So there may be some movement in those movie stocks. Maybe I'll look at that on Monday. Uh, but uh, I don't know them right off the top of my head. The only one I know is I've got a subscriber that's always 
bugging me about Lionsgate, but uh, I never really thought that much about uh, investing in them. But uh, there may be a couple of decent titles out that actually save uh, the fall for uh, Hollywood. Activision, anyway, down, uh, kind of picking up a little bit. Uh, this is starting to break the uptrend, um, and we were going to take a look at Electronic Arts also. Um, as we said, this one kind of came off on earnings. It's kind of bounced a little up here. This has bounced today, though, was on very light volume. It came in, filled about half the gap. Um, I would have probably been thinking about shorting this thing at 82 uh, today if I had been watching it. Um, I don't know if there's that much more, but I think this could come down to about 68 bucks and would not be a surprise. I'll look some more uh, for the release schedule of new video games this fall, but I think a lot of them are, uh, are not going to make it. Sometimes it just takes too long to get the software out, and they end up going into the uh, first quarter of uh 2017, uh, but uh, we'll see. It just didn't seem like uh, there's that kind of game that really makes everybody uh, go to and buy the latest video game and then start buying more, um, and that may be a big problem. Uh, this whole sector has done nothing but go up for a couple of years, uh, and uh, there may be a lack of software to go with it. A lot of people looking at uh, Facebook's Oculus Rift to take this Part of it, it's still wildly expensive, and I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. It may take uh, the luster off Electronic Arts, off of Activision, and some of these other ones. But uh, the big titles uh, that have been out there for a while, uh, no, you know, maybe they're coming out. I just haven't seen or they haven't advertised them or talked about them. But uh, we'll see how that comes out. Uh, anyway, what else do we have going on out here? Uh, for on a percentage basis, uh, the uh, stock that gets the incredible loser horn today is MCDA. Uh, unfamiliar with the stock at all, other than the fact that uh, it got blown apart today. Is that right, Ant? M C? Oh, M D C A. Dyslexia cure for found. Da, da, da. Let's see out here. Uh, yeah, the rivals got 100% so far. Uh, Ted Cruz is. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Uh, anyway, MCD Partners is the big loser of the day. Uh, when you got an eight or nine dollar stock that gets halved in a day down to a low of 275, I didn't even bother looking at the news at this. Um, it's bad, whatever the news is, and uh, it doesn't really matter, does it? When you get a stock like this job so bad like this, um, you can't short it. You can't go long. Uh, so other than looking at it and seeing other stocks that blow up like this, not a lot of reason to spend much time on it. But uh, MC, uh, MDC Partners is with it. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. I remembered seeing this stuff. I had to look it up during the break. The bar is just another, uh, is uh, just further descending into a banana republic. <laughs> this is in California. But uh, we've got our own issues here in the. Uh, uh, sunshine state of uh, Florida, uh, but mostly these aren't on a on a big scale. They're on individual lawyers, and I think that one is going to be made into a movie uh, that goes with uh, the all the lawsuits going on around uh, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, people here in Tampa know it. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, we want to look at some of these others. Uh, starting to roll down just a little on the S and P twenty ninety four. Volume 2.56 uh, billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. Um, again, kind of interesting to see the news last night. Almost no discussion of a close under Dow 18,000. I wonder if tonight that will change. It was uh, almost all, it was politics. I, I figured that it would be kind of close to the top. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, in the non-trading community uh, if they weren't just really keeping an eye on it, would know. I wonder if they're going to wake up this weekend and see uh, that uh, the Dow closed below 18,000 and start waking up Monday. Uh, other stocks uh, that are moving, uh, GoPro uh, was down much farther, GPRO. Horrible, just a hideous uh, earnings call. Um, and uh, I'd written about uh, why I didn't think that there was anything in GoPro last week in the uh, Tech Insider. Uh, there is a competing company uh, called a, a DJI. Uh, you'll find their drones at like Best Buy. Uh, but uh, GoPro had shown a what they were kind of calling as a portable drone. The whole thing kind of folded up like... Uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, CIA uh, trick pin that turned into a gun. Well, everything folded in. Everything kind of popped. It was a little bigger um, than uh, what came out from DJI. Uh, the DJI ones also had uh, used the trick that sailboats have on their props. Uh, when they turn the engine off, little props kind of fold up too. Uh, and uh, DJI added that to it. But um, both uh, GoPro and DJI had made these little kits where you could put a small backpack, uh, and the drone in the backpack, and go hiking up some mountain or something. I don't know if there's that much business in it, uh, but the thought was that uh, drones were going to sell or save GoPro. And again, GoPro's whatever, 
Every time I look at it, it's 30, 40 percent short, so I can't get in it. The thought was that maybe there'd be some big money in this thing. Maybe it could get back up to 17 bucks. You could make 70 percent on it. Um, I just don't see it. And again, those DJI Phantom drones, um, it actually looked a little better to me. Both of these things uh, that uh, they're pushing are about a thousand bucks. Uh, I don't know about what the margins look like, although I think the margins are probably better at DJI. Um, but, uh, you know, is there anything out here in GoPro that's actually ever going to make this thing worth significantly more money? Uh, you had a nice short squeeze up there to 1768. It pretty much gave it all up and it's back down. But uh, we're probably going to play around here before we go back and test uh, $8.62. Uh, and whether or not this thing becomes a big problem below that. But uh, huge volume today. I don't see anything so, uh, really saving these guys for Christmas. And, you know, is there is there a point? And I kind of brought it up with Facebook uh, and Apple and some of these other ones. There's a point where everybody's invested in something. But there's also uh, a part where everybody's already got something uh, that isn't something that's just real easy to do. Probably most people could fly a drone if they wanted to. I imagine half people, uh, half the people would be scared to do so. But at the same time, how many people are going to want to fly over their house with a drone? It's just not something that everybody wants to do. We talked about the same kind of phenomena that went on in the 90s when I was involved in video editing uh, and some of the products that went into it. Uh, there was a company that was pushing that everybody was going to try to make Gone with the Wind and Citizen Kane in their basements. Uh, the reality is that good movies take hundreds and sometimes thousands of people in a collaborative effort. Uh, when my time out in California that I was around these big time directors, not ever really speaking too much with them, uh, but uh, just seeing what went on and around as they made the movies, these guys uh, have to have a vision, but their vision is much more about uh, getting things done, uh, how great a, uh, a general they can be on the battlefield. Uh, they kind of have that idea already when they come in, but uh, they have to work with the cameraman. They've got to work with the lighting people. They basically are trying to get their vision uh, down on film, and then a great deal of how that looks ends up being in the edit bay for an editor. Uh, but having different people look at these things. Uh, GoPro, the idea that everybody's going to, you know, jump out of an airplane, take video, and then put it on the Internet, and that's all going to be great video, and everybody's going to watch it. I don't know, probably by the 10th time I see somebody jump out of an airplane uh, with uh, and go free-falling, I Aren't you just kind of, I mean, isn't that story told? Is there a new story to be told in all of that? And that's what makes me think that at least for YouTube and GoPro, unless there's a compelling story to be put together with this, that uh, it is tough to see why these things would continue selling. There are some very compelling stories on YouTube using GoPro products. Uh, the ones I love are the motorcycle trips through all of South America. Uh, but uh, those are kind of the rare things. Mostly they're 5, 10, 20, 30 seconds of someone crashing their bicycle or motorcycle or jumping out of an airplane. And after a while, it just there's no compelling story. There's only action, and that kind of falls flat. I don't see anything that changes that in GoPro, although they continue to say that their new editing software will make everything great. Um, unfortunately, you need to have somebody with a vision to make everything great, even if they have the tools, and that is problematic. Uh, Monster, M-N-S-T. Uh, talking about things that are bad for you. Um, this one uh, gave it all up today. Uh, back down to 126.50 for the spike down. has lots of volume. Um, the gap up on the 29th of April had 5.2 million shares. We already have that today, so this has come back, filled the gap with the identical load of volume. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, I'm gonna 
ducking. Oh, a lot of ducking. Okay. I guess I can't talk that much. Uh, other stocks of interest out here, QRVO, which is, of course, a uh, combination of other companies, just with a new name uh, that doesn't mean anything. We'll talk more about Corvo when they come back. Um, radio Frequency Solutions. Um, this used to be the old RFMD, if I'm not mistaken, and some Broadcom stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, down with huge energy. We'll talk more about this as we come back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we come into the home stretch and the end of the weekend. Uh, Tom O'Brien, I see him warming up in the uh, bullpen. But uh, there is not a great deal going on out here. Up four points now in the S&P cash. Again, no sign of uh, capitulation, no sign of stress in the market. Far too many people on TV talking about buying these lows. i like to see some, uh, some people a little scared, maybe a little sweaty on TV, maybe a little panicky, maybe about actually talking about shorting this market instead of buying every dip. And maybe that can set up a low in these markets. I just haven't seen any of that kind of stuff so far that normally is associated with decent medium term uh, and uh, even long term lows. Um, 
unfortunately, we did close below the uh, the level that we should have last night. Uh, that now pretty much is kind of blown through this 2092, which I thought would be the support, first support level. Now, on Monday, uh, do I see anything changing? No. 10, 15 points higher on the S&P cash, but you also have the downside that this could go to 2030 on the S&P cash. Volume, just 2.65 billion shares, so not a lot of volume. Um, you could look at this as a pop on higher volume or a uh, lower low on lower volume. Um, one day is not going to be the end all, be all of a of a trade that is longer than 24 hours, which almost all of mine are. So uh, be reticent that I know that some people are trading on 10 or 15 minute charts. I am not. I never trade on anything less than daily charts. Uh, but, uh, you know, we slowly are pulling back out here. You got about an hour and five minutes. Um, a lot of people trying to get these hero trades out, thought that the market would bounce 30 or 35 points and they'd make a lot of money today. Uh, they're sitting on their hands now wondering whether or not they should get out. Um, they can probably get out flat now if they bought today or maybe bought in the last two days. Pretty close. Uh, do you want to be looking at the weekend, see that big uh, headline run across politically that blows everything up? Um, I just don't see it. So I suspect we're probably going to sell into the close once again today, Monday. Maybe uh, the polls give the markets enough um, basis to form an opinion, whether it's right or not is another thing, uh, to see the market change direction. But I just don't see it just to continue on. Anyway, we're talking about Cuervo down on strong volume. Uh, there is kind of a congestion area around 45 bucks on this. Uh, it did go through the gap that goes back to the 26th or 27th of uh, June. Again, these guys are in the, um, the business uh, of cell phone and cell phone parts. Let's check in with Apple today. Uh, I didn't see a lot more on this uh, other than a gap down. Uh, as we said a couple of days ago, when this thing did fail and gap down on earnings, it looked to me like 101 is truly in the often. Uh, that is kind of in this uh, double gap that goes back, uh, at least the first gap goes back to the 27th of July. Uh, now, you had some pretty good volume up there, 92 million shares. But to me, that 100, 101 area is where support is going to be found. You've got a high volume uh, move back here on the 12th. That's also just over that 102 area. So as you get into that area right there, 102, 101 is probably where we're going to come in. I don't think this gap up on uh, the 12th of September is going to hold. Uh, that 101, 102 area is still back in, and that's probably where the NASDAQ may have the next buying opportunity. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. Hang on for Tom O'Brien. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.